Elaine Cub is our marketing analyst this week. The USDA Monday made slight changes to the sizes of this year's corn and soybean crops. The agency trimmed its corn projection by about 68 million bushels and increased its estimate on soybeans by about 31 and a half million bushels. Nebraska's share remained the same in corn but grew in soybeans as the USDA increased yield from 53 to 54 bushels per acre. As a whole, the U.S. soybean production estimate of 107.7 million metric tons surpasses Brazil's at 94 million metric tons and nearly doubles Argentina's 55 million metric ton estimate. We started our discussion with Elaine Thursday afternoon by asking for her thoughts on Monday's reports. Well, you know, the November crop reports are generally not very exciting, and this one shouldn't have been, and, and the markets didn't really seem to find it that exciting, but there was one weird little tweak. They dropped the U.S. average corn yield from, like, 174.2 mm -hmm. to 173.4. Like, it was a very small drop, but it seemed strange because everywhere across the United States we've heard very good yields. There's been nobody who's had disappointing yeah. yields. So... I looked at that and I think maybe it's related to um, the way that the corn is being stored or the way it's being harvested here at the end. You've got Wisconsin and Michigan that are very late with harvest and getting snowed on. And all across the northern Corn Belt we're seeing lots of open corn piles just because our pace of building storage has not kept up with the pace of yield gains. So I think perhaps there's some justification just if you think ahead to how much grain little bits and pieces might be lost because of the storage problems. Mm -hmm. They're cutting out the quality, is your opinion? I think, yes, and I think it's very hard to put a number on that because we don't know how wet it's coming into all of the elevators, and we don't know how big the piles are necessarily. Nobody mm -hmm. has a very good handle on that, but it does bear some justification to a tweak in the, in the yield or in the overall production. Tell me how basis is moving here as we close out harvest. Pretty much just like you'd expect it to be. We finally have a normal year again where you have the, the gut slot of harvest with fairly normal basis numbers, 30 under, 40 under, and they're starting to tighten up here as the harvest comes to an end. Soybeans have been very, very volatile yeah. recently. How much of that is tagged to soybean meal? I think almost entirely. I mean, there's no other very bullish story you can come up with other than the fact that all of a sudden soybean meal is above $400 a ton. So on, on Thursday here, it had a fresh new high. It went even above its October high. And that's sort of a, a consistent pattern if you get, you know, a really short supply of some commodity and people are really struggling to source that and, and have built in this excited bubble. And I think the, to the degree that soybeans are following soybean meal, it may be an artificial bubble. There's a lot of speculative volume that's participating in that, and I don't know that it makes sense when you have almost 4 billion bushels of soybeans actually sitting in the world, so this soybean meal thing is, is a shorter term. If that's the case, and it is a bubble, if it would pop, what would that do? Well, I think it's... Does I, it follow, I guess, is my question. Yeah. I mean, at some point, the soybean meal supply chain will be filled up, these four billion bushels of soybeans will be turned into soybean meal and soybean oil and, and, the, and the problem will, will solve itself. And at that point, the bubble will be justified to fall. But I think the soybean prices themselves could fall even sooner than that. Simply, they're overpriced compared to corn. Like I said, there's a bunch of them yeah. and it doesn't necessarily need to follow soybean meal the way that it has. So December 15, corn is ahead of 14. November 15, soybeans are lower than 14. Analyze those ratios. Yeah, again, it's the very immediate uh, demand for soybeans that is, is causing the biggest premiums. But even in 2015, we still have soybeans that are overpriced compared to corn as far as their historical ratio goes. So at this point, you'd look ahead to 2015 and still see soybeans being the more profitable way to go. But I don't know if that's going to last all through winter and spring. Eventually, these relationships come back together. Do you feel then that there are still acres in play and farmers deciding whether or not to go to corn or soybeans next spring? Absolutely, and I think that it makes sense to kind of sit and wait because uh, one place where the acres are very actively in play is they're being planted right now in Brazil and Argentina. And the estimates there are that they're going to plant more than expected soybeans because it's more profitable there, obviously. Uh, they may not plant very many acres of corn at all, so we could easily see, you know, a spring rally for corn that would bring that profitability a little more favorable. And if the fertilizer stays kind of cheap or, or relatively affordable as it has, you know, I, I think that corn could very well be a player in 2015. What are your targets here for, let's say, cash selling of either corn or soybeans? Well, like I said, the soybeans are overpriced. They've had this incredible run up for, you know, questionable justification. So I think if you could get a $10 on soybeans or if you don't even want to risk it to, you know, be too aggressive there, that soybeans might be presenting you an opportunity. 
But again, this is a fairly normal year. You might expect to see a fairly normal seasonal pattern of corn going up through the spring, maybe March, April time frame. We could easily see a $4 in front of it, I think. Uh, Brent crude oil is now hovering below or right at $80 a barrel. Is there significance to that or does it surprise you? It's significant um, in that it is directly related to the strength of the U.S. dollar and the way that the entire commodity sector really gets pummeled when the dollar is as strong as it is. So grains follow that to some extent. Cheaper consumer goods make the stock market go up. So it's just part of a bigger pattern. Yeah.